where the heck does consciousness happen in what we understand about the brain timing wise? Uh, I mean, this connects to conscious will too, our experience of free will. Yeah. There is this period of time and it's depending on the situation and the behavior. Um, it, it can be anywhere from, it, it's essentially half a second. There's a, 200 milliseconds. I actually don't know. I was going to compare it to the timing of syncing film and sound. I don't know if you know this Yeah, data. unfortunately, I know this very well. You do? The the, the film and sound? Yeah. Like yes. How, what? What, how, the ti- how the timing has to work so that we conscious, so that our experiences of it happening at the same time. Let me just, let me just sit, so sit in the, in the <laughs> silence of it. There's been so much pain on this one point. <laughs> Sorry. So I, much I had no suffering. idea. I was... <laughs> so... I mean, I, yeah, I, I did a lot of algorithms on automatic synchronization of audio and video right, and all right. these kinds of things. No, I know this well. Uh, there's a lot of science and there's a lot of differences, but it's, it's about, and people claim it's about 100 milliseconds. You can't tell the difference, but it's m- okay. much more like 30 to 50 milliseconds. Okay. okay. And it, 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 you can go nuts yes. trying to see if something is in sync or not. Yes. Is it in sync or not? Well, also, you know, am I out brain, of sync right your now? Your brain is constantly making adjustments, yeah. and so it can shift for you while you're doing that, which is probably part of the thing that's driving yeah. you crazy. Um, yep. Okay, so I'll start with binding processes, and then I'll just give a couple examples. Um, so, yes, there's this window um, where your brain is essentially putting all of the information together to deliver you a present moment experience that is most useful for you to navigate the world. Mm-hmm. Um, so as I said, and you know, I use this example of tennis in my book. So the sights and sounds are coming at us at different rates. Um, it takes longer for a sensation in my hand when I hit the ball with the racket to travel to my brain than it does for the light waves to hit my retina and get processed by the brain. So all these these signals are coming in at different times. Our brains go through this process of binding to basically weave it all together so that our, our conscious experience of that is of seeing, hearing, and feeling the ball hit the racket all at the same time. I mean, that's obviously most useful to us. Binding is is mostly about timing. It, it can be about other things. But I was just talking to David Eagleman, who was talking about a very simple experiment, actually. And this kind of shows how your brain is basically always interacting with the outside world and always making adjustments to make its best guess about the most useful present moment experience to deliver. So this is a very simple experiment. This is from many, many years ago. Um, and David Eagle, David Eagleman was was involved in this research, where they had participants hit a button, and that button caused a flash of light. Mm-hmm. And so our brains, through binding, the brain it notices is is able to kind of calibrate the experience you have because the brain is aware that it is its own hand that is causing the light to flash, that there's this cause and effect going on. And so you have this experience of pushing the button that causes the flash of light, which is true, and the the light flashes. You can start to introduce longer pauses, um, starting with 20 milliseconds, 30 milliseconds, going up to, I think, 100, maybe even 200 milliseconds, where if you do it gradually, since your brain is making the adjustment, Um, You can introduce a delay. I think it's up to 200 milliseconds. If you do it gradually, you will still have the experience, even though there's now a delay between when you hit the button and the light flashes, you will still have the exact same experience you had initially, which is that the light flashes right when you push the button. In your experience, nothing is changing. But then, so they, they gradually give a delay you've acclimated to that because it was done gradually. If they then go back to the original instantaneous flash, your brain doesn't have time to make the adjustment and you have the experience that the light flashed before you hit the button. And that is your true experience. It's not like you're confused, but that is your brain didn't have time to, to make that adjustment. You think you're in the same environment. You're pushing the button. It makes the light flash. It's kind of calibrating all the time. But then the the participants are suddenly saying, oh, wait, that was so weird. The light flashed before I hit the button. And so 
these types That's crazy. Of, they built a um, Rochambeau rock, paper, scissors computer game that was unbeatable based on this glitch that you can present in in binding by training someone if you introduce a delay slowly enough then the computer can get the information before it responds but you still have the experience that you're both throwing out your rock or paper scissors at the same time but in actuality the computer saw your choice before it makes its choice. And it's in this window of milliseconds where you don't notice it. So that starts to help you build up an intuition that this conscious experience is an illusion constructed by the brain after. Uh, conscious will. Conscious will. Yeah, and, and just in general that that consciousness is not the thing that we feel it is, which is driving the behavior that is actually at the tail end of it. And so a lot of decision-making processes, and the, there are studies that are more controversial and I, I don't usually um, like to cite them, although if you wanna talk about them, we can. They're super interesting and intu intuition shattering, but there, there are now studies specifically about free will to see if there are markers at the level of the brain that can see what decision you're going to make and when you make that decision. And um, I think this, the neuroscience inevitably is just going to get better. And so, Part of the reason I'm so passionate about this, I mean, there's there's the science and there's just the curiosity that that drives me of wanting to understand how the universe works. But I actually see a lot of the neuroscience presenting us with truths that are going to be difficult for us to accept. And I actually think there are really positive ways to view these truths that we're uncovering. And even though they can be initially kind of jarring and, and even destabilizing and, and creepy, I think ultimately there's actually a lot, it can have a positive effect on human psychology and, and a whole range of things um, that I and others have, have experienced and that I think it's important for us to talk about because you can't hide from the truth, especially in science, right? Like it just, it, it will reveal itself. And if this is true, I think not only for better understanding the universe and nature, which is kind of my, my primary passion, um, it's important for us to absorb these facts and realize that they don't, it doesn't necessarily take away the things from us that we fear. Um, I, you know, I've heard people say this is talked about. It's a common common point to make or question to ask a scientist: Can you still, you know, enjoy chocolate if you're a molecular biologist? And mm -hmm. um, is it a molecular biologist that would be the one who would understand how we experience chocolate? <laughs> I right. have the wrong science. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, if you but the if point you, stands. If you're, if you're focused on the the details of the you know the underlying nature of reality, does that take the joy and the pleasure and, um, for lack of a better word, spirituality out of our experience as human beings? And I actually think um, for these illusions like free will and self, the reverse is true. I actually think they can give us they are reasons and bases for feeling more connected to each other and to the universe, for spiritual experiences, for um, even just on a more basic level, for increasing our, our well-being just in terms of our psychology, of lowering rates of depression and anxiety. And um, I actually think these realizations can be extremely helpful to people.